for me personally, screen time means a period of time you spend either looking at a screen or using a device that holds a screen. I think any time during the day when you're on an electronic. The amount of time you spend on your devices. The amount of time that you spend on your device. The time you spent on your device. Screen time means the time you spend on your phone, laptop, computer, TV, anytime you're facing a screen. Any time at all spent in front of a digital screen. Phones laptops, and television. Choosing in between the time you either have to play games or watch videos. Any time I'm looking at any sort of screen. So uh, screens are everywhere and screen time is the amount of time we spend behind them. There are so many benefits. Um, I am constantly entertained by a screen in a good way. Easy access to information. For example, right now I'm working out, so I could keep track of like my, my rhythm. I could listen to podcasts. It's pretty easy to feel lonely, like without being able to see a lot of people. So I think it definitely helps with that. Having access to communications allows me to be in different places in the building at once and not tied down to one spot. It's like easy to use and it helps. It helps me keep in contact with my friends and family. You communicate with people so quickly and so much faster than if you had to see them or call them and you know you can send an email and reach a thousand people. Or you know I don't have to remember 47 phone numbers for example. I can just uh, focus on on different things. So being able to contact school and like be in touch with school much faster for me, my device is very helpful in online school and even little things like searching up stuff. It's been able to keep me connected with my students and keep us connected as a school community. For myself, I would say it definitely is beneficial because I am able to connect with uh, my friends from the U U.S. where I went to U school. And some drawbacks is that I use it more than I should. So if I'm watching at nighttime, I would have really bad. Uh, I would have a really bad sleep schedule. That would mess. That would mess me up a lot. Oh, wasting time on Instagram while well, I could be doing other things. That's like the only thing really. Sometimes it's like really annoying because my sister, she is always on her phone, and sometimes I try to hang out with her, um, but she just keeps going on her phone all the time, all the time, all the time. I would say because it's a little addictive. For me, I find that I'm on it too much. It can get very addicting. Um, it's costly, like having to buy technology. I find that staring at a screen for a very long time gives me large migraines. So I'm trying not to do it as much. All the time, I'll be like talking to anyone really, like it can even be my friends or my brother. I'm talking to them and it's just they're just attached to their phone like every few seconds to look at it. In my mind, I'll just think like they're not interested in what I'm saying. Um, so I definitely think that it's it's hard to, to disconnect from it just because it's so accessible and so quick. Like there's always that feeling of more and more and more. Like what, what can I do next with this, you know, device in my hand? Uh, I find when I'm going on YouTube and I watch a lot of like fails and like compilations, I'm gonna be there for like almost an hour on my phone. Well, it's honestly for me, it's just, just constantly staying connected to my friends, right? It just makes it easier for me to consume more. Uh, it's difficult to disconnect just because of the sheer amount of stuff you can do online. Like if you're on Instagram, you're scrolling for hours and you don't even realize. So every time you log on, it's new content and so it's very interesting. I'm watching a good like anime or a good YouTube video like I want to keep watching it and like it's hard to like disconnect because it grabs my attention. Because it's so addictive um, I think the fear of missing out really plays a big role. I'd say the biggest thing that prevents me from disconnecting is my job. I don't know it's just so addicting you know like it's just something that's added into like our daily lives. And it's like really hard um, to like just be at home without being able to text someone, without being able to watch like a TV show or anything. Almost everything you do involves technology. It would be my friends. They're always texting. Sometimes they have something 
like important to say and half of the time it's about homework. What page is it? What answer did you write for this question? I think getting into bad habits has prevented me from disconnecting. Uh, the feeling of missing out. I have a hard time disconnecting because I don't like to not know what's going on. I have fear of missing out. I want to get information back to people right now. Like my workday has gone from eight to four to nine to five to, you know, eight to eight. The hard, hardest thing for me would be checking emails and being on top of communication when it comes to screen time. I, I like to be away from technology sometimes because it helps me. And then like, sometimes I like to be on it just to like watch to binge watch or something i do like a no technology sunday and i'll leave my phone in another room and i won't even answer any texts from any friends or family i try to like limit so then i can like at least like spend like a little bit more time with my family um, when i'm doing homework i try to just like put my screens outside in the hall so we'll do phone free saturdays at home or we'll take a whole day off and it's tricky because you're like, oh, but I just want to send this one. Oh, but it's so hard. I've tried, but never, I've never made like a real full attempt to do it. I always think, oh, I should do this. I should do that. I think most of my electronic use is just glued to my phone or like a book on it. But uh, I have tried to reduce that by getting audiobooks. Um, I don't feel like I personally need to manage my screen time because the majority of my screen time is on teams during the week. Through the quarantine, I, I had a phase where I just deleted all my social medias and it, it was actually nice. I have not consciously tried to manage my screen time, but my son has definitely put limits on my screen time. Uh, no, not really. I had my friends help with this. I would talk to them about it. And so if I were to go on it, They'd see that I'd be online and they'd immediately call me and I'd get off, but that just stopped working after a while. I'll have to try to do something else, like occupy my time with um, something other than my phone, for example, drawing. I spend family time when I'm on my phone too much, so I'll just go downstairs and then like play cards, video games, um, like puzzles and stuff like that. Homework or help, where when they start preparing dinner, we either have to help them with it, or we have to do homework, or go outside, just do something that's impacting us in a positive way. The best thing is to practice what you preach. If you're going to tell someone to not be on a screen, you can't be on a screen. So my students never see me holding my phone in class. But I really try to support teachers and students in, in trying to manage the use of technology in the classroom because I think it's such a great tool to have. We've all just kind of been like, well, we sit down and we just like spend time together for a while without electronics. They've definitely said, oh, you know, like once you go to bed, you put your phone upstairs or you charge it somewhere that's not your room. If they notice that I'm super exhausted that day, if they notice I've been up on my phone all night, they'll they'll do like they'll take my phone away at night just to just to give me that extra couple of hours of sleep. Uh, they've never really like noticed it and they and if they would they probably wouldn't care. During the summer it's like two hours per day for summer because we're always active as a family. Mom would set screen time limit to about one an hour and a half per day. They're the one that would usually let me go on my electronics before when I was a kid. They're the one who would let me go on my electronics and there's the one that would make me get off my electronics. Mom did. She added like a screen time, screen time thing. I did take away my phone at night. Never. So we ended up at like nine because that's usually when I go to bed and stuff. Um, he would take my phone. Kids, <laughs> my kids are on my case. My kids are on my case a lot. They, uh, they don't, uh, they can't see when I'm on my phone for work. They, they don't notice the difference between whether it's for work or for Instagram. And uh, so I often, they're often frustrated with me because they think I'm not paying attention because I'm in the zone, but really I might be working.
I would say no. <laughs> I try to encourage other people in the house to put their phones away. Um, definitely a rule in our house is when we eat supper, like there is no phone at the table. I think it's a great benefit, you know? I think it's I think it's a really great benefit for like schooling and such. At school, in person, it's not bad. Um, I do love like how organized and clear everything is, like on Google Classroom. I love using technology in school. And I think the key to using it to its greatest effect is to be mindful about it. I think, you know, it's it's 2021. I think we need to like any any job, any anywhere the students are gonna go in the future, they're going to need it. So I think it's important to use it, you know. Honestly. I don't mind it. The average student nowadays does not like writing on paper. I am one of those students. I do not like writing on paper. I find it irritating. I'd much ra rather just like type it all out and put it in a board, board document. I think that it's an advantage. I, I really like the way that Teams and Google Classroom works. Technology in school has freed up our minds a lot. We've transitioned from, you know, the rote memorization of, um, facts and figures, and now we're able to think more critically and more analytically. And for that, I think technology is great. I find that it's helped me a lot, especially using my phone in class. Because it makes the work quite a bit easier. It's pretty good, counting that I'm a person who likes technology a little too much. Um, our teachers should keep them. And then when we need them for like, inspire, like in art class, let's say we need inspiration then our teachers would give us our device. I do like that we have our devices in class and it's like there when we need it. But like at the same time, I liked it how when like a teacher keeps our devices in like a bin or of some sort because kids do misuse their privileges. Yeah, I think the phones help, but they people also misuse it. I like having my phone because I can use it to like, I don't know, text my mom if I need anything or whatever. I don't need to ask like um, a teacher to go down to the office to go call my mom if I want to go home or something. I love it when I can design projects where students can use digital drawing or di digital illustration to kind of fulfill the requirements of a project. Um, however, because we can't monitor it 100%, I don't love it for the junior high school just because they could be on Instagram quickly and they're they're so good with technology that they could quickly transfer their screen and I would never catch them. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can continue using some of those strategies next year and in other years. Sometimes, you know, there's some kids that, that miss school because they're sick or there's personal stuff going on or they're competing in a volleyball tournament. And I think it's a great way for everyone to stay connected with what's going on in the classroom. Um, so, I would say the pros outweigh the cons, um, but always trying to struggle as a principal and leader on how we can use technology more effectively in the classroom and limit the distractions. I think that it's really important that we, as much as technology is a great tool to connect us, we have to remember that the best connections are the connections that we make face to face. And so it, um, it upsets me when I walk down the hall and I see kids at lunch and instead of talking to each other, they're, they're on their phones. And sometimes they're even chatting with each other when they're still in the same spot. And I just, I think that's sad because I think human connection is the most important thing in the world, so. I feel like the time of, of workbooks and textbooks, and, like I think we're really moving forward from that and, and I'm happy about that. Like I think we, like education has taken a long time to catch up to where we are. Um, in the world, especially when it comes to technology. Uh, I'm really happy that the government has given us so much money to purchase the, like it's incredible if you think about it, how many, like we have hundreds and hundreds of devices, hundreds of laptops that we've been able to, to get out to students to use at home. Um, is it perfect? No, but I, I, I'm excited that, that we've had that opportunity to start the process. Um, how we're going to upkeep all of that technology, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but when it comes to learning and in the classroom, yeah, I'm a huge supporter of, of use of technology as long as it's done, you know, in in a way that is structured. If it's if it's a free for all and people are just using it whenever and however they want, 
obviously, you know, like if I'm if I'm learning something, even as an adult, if I'm in a workshop and I have the chance to be on my phone doing something else, I'll do it. You know, <laughs> like I'll check my texts, I'll check Instagram because that's the way things are now. So as long as it's structured and clear and you have the chance to put it down sometimes and do other things and talk to one another, uh, engage in a class discussion, like as long as all of those things are still going on, um, I think it's it's a real positive. It's like, you know, it was like when I first got a phone at home as a child, it wasn't a phone in my room. It was a like a 16 foot cord in the kitchen that you went into the closet with. Um, and then I got my own cell phone from the board and then that became my focus. And then I learned to, to, to dump that. Um, it's, it's like grade eight going to grade nine and you want to leave property. And then you get out there and it's like, it's really no big deal. You know, screen time is the same. It's, you're at an age where you're getting this for the first time. Uh, perhaps you're, you're not so monitored by your parents. Um, and when you're going to peak before you, you start to control it, but you have to be, I think now very aware of how to control your screen time, uh, especially where and when during the school day. I think, I think it's good to acknowledge that I, th I think everyone struggles with limiting screen time. It's not something that is just students or um, just um, young adults. It's everyone that is, is having a difficult time with screen time. So it's good to talk about it and it's good to share strategies and it's good to, um, to challenge ourselves to limit our screen time and to uh, get outside or like really engage in learning without technology some of the time.